What's your favorite Assassin's Creed says about you? I've compiled this entire trilogy in a single video since it's been such an unexpected success on YouTube. Check out my brand new store through the link in the description if you want to get yourself a gloriously designed Assassin's Creed coffee mug. And without further ado, grab your popcorn and enjoy the trilogy. What's your favorite Assassin's Creed says about you? Assassin's Creed. If this is your favorite AC game, you're most likely the oldest person watching this video. Even though Assassin's Creed is outdated, you understand how this game started the entire franchise off. No matter what AC game comes out in the future, you'll remain loyal to Assassin's Creed until the day you die. Assassin's Creed 2 You appreciate the innovation more than most people. You recognize the insane effort that went into the transformation process from AC1 to AC2. You also appreciate the unique atmosphere that AC2 had, and you love the game so much to the point where you forget to feel offended when someone tells you that you're blinded by nostalgia. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood Your opinions are usually always correct. You have a great taste in video games. Shout out to my Goated Brotherhood subscribers. Assassin's Creed Revelations. You stubbornly hold the opinion that the Ezio trilogy couldn't have been wrapped up better and that no other AC storyline has a better ending. Assassin's Creed 3. Even though everyone mocks your favourite AC title, you have enough mental strength to hold your ground and avoid peer pressure from those who follow mainstream opinions. You also secretly enjoy defending such an unpopular opinion in the AC community, but you'd rather have your opinion be left alone. Leave me alone, please leave me alone. Leave me alone, please leave me alone. Assassin's Creed 4. Black Flag. You like pirates and you have a strange addiction to tailing missions. And you like pirates and pirate ships. You also like the unserious nature of Edward Kenway and you appreciate some of the light-hearted elements of AC. Assassin's Creed Unity. You believe that an excellent parkour system is the key to an excellent AC game. You also get triggered when people still talk about the old glitches that were constantly going on back in 2014. You're aware that most of these glitches and bugs have been patched a long time ago which is why you get annoyed when people still talk about bugs that happened a tenth of a century ago. Assassin's Creed Rogue. You love Shane as an intimidating character. You think that the Templar-based storyline was innovative, new and engaging. You also think that Rogue should have been released on a different date to Unity. The the fact that both games were released on the same day meant that Rogue was destined to live in Unity's shadow. Assassin's Creed Syndicate You're a firm believer that an immersive setting matters more than a very good story. Speaking of the story, you prefer it when AC games aren't too gritty and dark, which is why you appreciate Jacob's unserious vibe. You'd also get along well with the AC4 fans. Assassin's Creed Origins You were unsure about the RPG combat system at first, until you got used to it. Now, you are shy to admit that you love the Origins combat system. You also love the side quests a lot more than the fans of the games I mentioned earlier. After playing Syndicate, you wanted something entirely new and you were pleased with the outcome. Assassin's Creed Odyssey You love the RPG combat and you aren't ashamed to admit it. You love RPG games in general and Odyssey is a game that delivers. You don't really think that every new AC game must connect in some way to the older games and Odyssey was a breath of fresh air for you. Assassin's Creed Valhalla <laughs> What your favourite Assassin's Creed says about you. Part 2. Assassin's Creed You're a player that just wants simplicity in a game to be executed well. You don't really care about how many miles along a road is, you don't care about whether or not NPC goats bark at the right frequency, and you don't really care about whether or not the main storyline takes at least 37 hours to finish. You just want to play a game where you're able to move around freely in a really nice looking environment, kill dozens of enemies in a short period of time, and play as a really interesting character like Ultair, whose unique story manages to keep you engaged from start to finish. Assassin's Creed 2 You love the fact that your opinion of objectively cannot be challenged. If anyone tries to criticise AC2's flaws, you can just bring out the facts. Which AC game introduced double eliminations? AC2. Which AC game introduced hidden blades on both forearms? AC2. Which AC game introduced a notoriety and economic system to the game? AC2. Which AC game birthed arguably the greatest soundtrack in gaming history? AC2. The fact that this game really pushed the franchise forward in such an influential way means that it's a game somewhat immune to criticism. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. You miss the multiplayer mode more than anyone. You reminisce about the good old days where you were running for your life after being spotted in a game of Wanted. The panicked rush you got from trying to escape your pursuer in one of those games reminds you why Ubisoft desperately needs to bring back this game mode in the coming years. Unfortunately, AC Mirage failed to bring back the multiplayer mode, so that's why I say years. Assassin's Creed Revelations You value efficiency more than the average AC fan. The introduction of hook blades and zip lines initially concerned many AC fans because it seemed to remove the necessity of relying solely on pure parkour for map traversal. Eventually, zip lining was widely accepted by the AC community, which is why Ubisoft has chosen to keep the feature to this day. You believe that AC fans should be more appreciative of this revelation's innovation since large scale maps would have been a nightmare to travel around without some form of zipline mechanism. Assassin's Creed 3 Out of all the Assassin's Creed fans, you my friend have the longest attention span. While others complain about the stretched out prologue sequence, you appreciate that introduction. You strongly believe that a detailed backstory was necessary to build a connection between the fans of the franchise and Connor. After Ubisoft concluded SEO's beloved storyline, fans were understandably skeptical and even cynical about the announcement of AC 
3 and the introduction of Connor. You agree that the only way Ubisoft could have won over fans was by ensuring players had the opportunity to understand the context behind Connor's past. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag You are still in denial of the fact that Black Flag rinsed out the tailing missions. Now don't get me wrong, other AC fans also have some really underwhelming tailing missions, but Black Flag's ones felt particularly repetitive. I think the fact that slow paced tailing missions often took place just after high intensity ship or land battles made these missions stand out as flaws. Despite this, you will likely continue defending these tailing missions until your last breath. Or maybe you don't have to, considering Black Flag is superior in many ways compared to the other titles. Or at least you tell yourself this while you're stalking some random NPC for the 59th time. Assassin's Creed Unity You don't believe that the main protagonist's character is the most important thing in an AC game, or in any game in general. Like sure, Honor was a great character, but in my opinion, he was not as likeable as some of the other characters. I've also spoken to many people that think Unity is the best game of the franchise, and a lot of them would also admit that even though the game is excellent, Honor's personality and character development could have been a bit more refined. Nevertheless, Yusuf flex the fact that Unity arguably has the best parkour mechanics of any AC game, and I would say there is a case to be made about Unity having one of the best combat mechanics on top of that. Assassin's Creed Rogue You appreciate the uniqueness of the game, since you're with the Templars now, hunting down assassins. You know, the good guys that you've been loyally protecting and passionately fighting for since 2007, potentially? Yeah, well now you're exterminating them in the hopes of bringing their millennia old cause to collapse. You also appreciate how they brought in some characters from previous AC games like Hatham and Achilles, which really makes it feel like the AC storyline is deeply interconnected, which is great for gameplay immersion. Assassin's Creed Syndicate You secretly think that Jacob is better than most of the characters in the franchise. Sure, you don't want to admit it, but deep within you, you think there is an abstract philosophical case that would prove that the other assassins should bow down to Jacob's greatness. The same could be said for Evie, but I think this deeply disturbing and radical way of thinking stems from the Jacob fans primarily. Assassin's Creed Origins You like balance. You don't like it when a gaming franchise with a long history takes some insanely over the top steps to ensure that the next game is unrecognisable to the last, but you also think that AC fans should stop prioritising nostalgia over figuring out ways to advance the franchise forward, since innovation is crucial in your opinion. So you like the way Origins turned out. The RPG elements were definitely there, but the stealth mechanics and other OG themes and systems of the franchise remained intact. Assassin's Creed Odyssey You like how your level of power evolves progressively throughout the game since you feel rewarded each time you push through a mission, whether that be a side quest or a main mission. You love how the map is so big you will likely have a hard time exploring every detail of it, and you probably have an unhealthy obsession with Greek mythology. Assassin's Creed Valhalla what the fuck is you what talking the about? Fuck? Assassin's Creed Mirage. You likely haven't played Unity in the last five years, and your previous favorite game was Origins. What's your favorite Assassin's Creed says about you? Part 3. The last video in the series managed to hit 500 likes in a few days, so the promised ending to the trilogy is finally here. You can't put it into words, but the raw and genuine feel of AC1's atmosphere remains unmatched for you. Sure, you might gain a typical level of video game satisfaction from playing a game like Black Flag or Unity, but no other game can intensely immerse you in the environment like the original Assassin's Creed can. Assassin's Creed 2. You think that the young Ezio arc really highlights the insane character development of AC2. The gradual growth of Ezio's discipline, wisdom, skill and maturity was executed perfectly, and in your opinion, AC2 was the game that set the bar really high in terms of including complex and detailed character development arcs in the franchise. You think AC1 did this too, but not in the same way that AC2 did. Assassin's Creed Brother, your jaw almost fell to the floor after you played AC2. You couldn't believe it was even possible for a game to be so incredible. You thought Ubisoft hit its peak until Brotherhood came out. In your opinion, Brotherhood is the advanced version of AC2. You appreciated how AC2 perfectly set Ezio's story up, since it allowed you to play as Prime Ezio and Brotherhood. You have a huge level of respect towards AC2 because of this. Assassin's Creed Revelations You love the Hookblade. You probably have a post in your room of the Hookblade. And there's a good chance you're Turkish. Or you're not Turkish, but you appreciate the Ottoman Turk vibe and atmosphere, and you're glad that Ubisoft didn't set the final Ezio game in Italy, as it would have been too repetitive, and the game would have potentially been overshadowed by the other two games of the trilogy. Assassin's Creed 3 You think that the AC community is overly focused on the protagonists of the franchise, which leads them to overlook and dismiss some of the incredible antagonists of the franchise. You like flexing the fact that Haytham was arguably the greatest antagonist of the entire franchise, and you still reminisce about that first time all those years ago when you experienced the Haytham story twist. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag You love how Ubisoft created a game that made you feel like an authentic pirate and an assassin at the same time. Every time an Odyssey or a Valhalla fan talks about how the AC franchise needs to lose its assassin charm to a certain extent to maintain relevance, freshness, and uniqueness, you bring up Black Flag, which is in your eyes the video game gold standard. Speaking of those 
those two games, you probably hate Odyssey and Valhalla more than the average AC fan. Assassin's Creed Unity. Every time someone criticizes Arno, you sigh in despair. Not because you think that Arno is as bad of a character as some of the critics say he is, but because you believe that if he was given a sequel AC title, he might have been considered one of the greatest assassins to date. You think that Arno's character simply didn't have enough time to properly develop, and so he was left as Ubisoft's half-baked, abandoned protagonist who once had lots of potential. Assassin's Creed Rogue. Since you're aware that Black Flag fans trash on Rogue the most, likely because both games were created similarly visually and technically, you avoid giving praise to Black Flag because of this. You know that if you talk admirably about how great Black Flag was in, say, YouTube comment sections, people continue to see Rogue as a B-Tech version of Black Flag. Instead, you aim to represent Rogue as its own unique game which can stand on its own two feet. Assassin's Creed Syndicate. You loved the criminal gang district elements of the game, since it enhanced the feeling of duty and objectiveness in the free roam, since you had to go borrow to borrow to liberate the city. You're likely a big fan of Peaky Blinders, and you like role-playing as a Victorian English gangster when no one's watching. And yes, I'm aware that Peaky Blinders was set half a century after Syndicate in a completely different part of England. Assassin's Creed Origins. You get slightly bothered when people just discard Bayek in those debates about who's the greatest assassin of all time. You think Bayek is on the same level as Ezio and Altair, if not even higher. You also think that the voice acting for Bayek's character is simply unmatched. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You're a Witcher 3, Ghost of Tsushima kind of person. You love vibrant open world RPG games, but pre-Odyssey, you love the AC franchise up to that point. When Ubisoft decided to go all out with its RPG style gameplay, you were extremely pleased with the outcome. Contrary to the negative opinions, you believe that Odyssey truly is an Assassin's Creed game, and you think that people who disagree with that don't appreciate the well-intended risk Ubisoft took in order to freshen up the franchise. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Alright, in the previous two videos of the series, I violated Valhalla fans by leaving out to the Valhalla segments intentionally, and I think I've accidentally created a war between the Valhalla fans and the haters in my comments. If you love Valhalla, you appreciate the ton of content that Ubisoft pumped into the game. You love the brutal Viking combat, raids, lore, and overall Norse mythological theme. Assassin's Creed Mirage. It's been like five weeks bro, give the game some time to age in your mind like fine wine before settling on a decision so quickly. 